bourgeoisie. They always sell out once they get into power. If you get closer to these people, you go the same road. I mean, so we'll be facilitating the selling out of the struggle for socialism. Now, so the question is, then we've been in power for how long? For more than 20 years, for more than 20 years. That question perhaps needs to be addressed more than ever before. What should be the relationship between the struggle for socialism and the struggle for national liberation? Now, program director, Dr. Vukosa, uh, let me just say uh, that the minister is indeed on Facebook as he is my friend. So I can, <laughs> I, uh, I, I make sure to read his posts every day, and he didn't post about the, the wedding of the royal family. I can confirm that, Minister, you did it. I, mean, I was tempted. I was tempted to do so. <laughs> I, must, I must confess. Now, Minister, you started about talking about the relationship between Madiba and Kotan. Now, there's a story. This campus is closer to the SAPC, to the headquarters. Madiba tells a very interesting story about uh, Moses Kotan and the SAPC. In, in 1958, in April 1958, there was a general election in South Africa, and so the ANC uh, decided to organize a stay away for three days. <clears throat> now, uh, on the first day, the stay away proved to be a complete failure, so they had to cancel it. And so uh, Madeva was with Kotan and they were writing the statement. And Kotan was very upset that he stay away, he had failed just on his first day. Uh, Madeva was saying, no, no, don't worry, it is better that we retreat on the first day rather than to wait to the third day because it would be a disaster on the third day. And so Kotan was quite fine with that. They released the statement, the SAPC read the statement in its fullness and that's what really upset Odan. He says, Madiba, it was fine that the stay away is a flop, but for the SAPC to read the whole statement, that, <laughs> that, that can't be right. Now, Minister, I saw a few days ago the, the SAPC carried uh, one of your events very well. It was praising you and I was thinking, <laughs> I wonder what got done. <laughs> I mean, if uh, the, the General Secretary of the SACP is praised by the SAPC, that can't be good. Of course, the context has changed. I mean, so we live in a democracy. So the, the SAPC is not part of the of the enemy. I've been thinking about the SACP for some time now, in the past few weeks. Now, they are, they are, that is one good thing about working at the university and not being a spokesperson, you think about important things. <laughs> now, I'll tell you honestly, part of the reason why I've been thinking about the SACP are two things. This year is the 30th anniversary of the publication of Mzala's book, Kajak Tele is a, a chief with a dummy agenda which was one of the most extraordinary books, and I read it actually about a week ago, reread it. It is still insightful as it was in 1988. It is an extraordinary book. But part of the reason why I've been thinking about the SACP is because in July the SACP is going to turn 97 years old. And in 2021, it will turn 100 years old. Now, you cannot read about the history of the Communist Party or about the history of the liberation movement in South Africa without thinking about the Communist Party. It is impossible. Some of the comrades who made the greatest sacrifices so that we could have the freedom that we have today were leaders of the Communist Party. And so, Minister, if there is anybody who, for a second, 
believe is the role that the Communist Party has played in South Africa, I know immediately that they do not know what they are talking about. And I'm pretty certain that the Communist Party is still going to play even a bigger role moving forward. But yes, I'm just going to say something, because there was a debate starting right from the beginning at the establishment of the Communist Party in 1921 about the relationship between the struggle for socialism and the struggle for national liberation. We have alluded to it. I thought perhaps I should just make a few remarks, especially about the period that you have spoken about. Between 1929 and I would say between 1929 and 1950. Because the dissolution of the Communist Party of South Africa in 1950 was a significant event. Just a little historical point, it is quite interesting that at the meeting where that decision was taken, now I read one of the speeches that Comrade Solima Baila gave, Moses Kotane was against the dissolution of the Communist Party of South Africa, completely opposed to it. But the majority of members of the Central Committee of the Communist Party thought it was the best course of action. But there was confusion because they had not explained to the general membership of the SACP what will happen next. Was the SACP being dissolved just for a few months so that it could be reconstituted? Or was it being dissolved completely? Now, that is not an insignificant question because when the SACP or the Communist Party was dissolved, those members of the Communist Party who were black, who were African, went to the African National Congress. The question was, what was to happen to white members of the Communist Party? Where were they to go? Now, this is important because the alliance that emerges after 1953 is partly informed by the discussion in the Communist Party about the nature of struggle, the relationship between the national struggle and the struggle for socialism. And the reason why it became quite significant in the 1940s and the 1950s, Minister, is because there was a transformation that was going on inside the ANC itself. Because the ANC for a long time, as you have said, it was what uh, in the Communist Party, I was taught communism by Comrade Jacob Mamabulu Minister, I won't believe it. <laughs> now, when I, when, I, when I was a student, uh, I know I'm sorry, when I was a student, I was reading a lot of Marxism. I thought you could have a, a, a communism at the university. So I became quite radical. Sasko expelled me for, for, for my radical views, and the person who reinstated me back to Sasko was Comrade Jacob Mamabun. That is when I really trusted communists. I said, you know what? I will be with communists all my life. <laughs> no, yes, I just want to go back because I think this relationship between the struggle for national liberation and the struggle for socialism is quite significant. Going back, as you know, to the 1929, when the, the thesis on the independent Native Republic, and of course, to 1934, the Cradle of and then we have in the 1940s, those struggles, not just only led by the SACP, but also even in the ANC, the Youth League. Because what happens when the SACP moves its headquarters from Cape Town to Transvaal, it also changes the character of the SACP. Because for a long time, even though Okotani since he became the, G the General Secretary of the SACP, had argued about his Africanization, but that was not a dominant view of the Communist Party of South Africa. It only becomes a dominant view in the 1950s when comrades like Hamed move in into the leadership of the Communist Party. The comrades in Cape Town always thought that the struggle for socialism was more important and that the Communist Party needed to focus on the class struggle at the expense of the struggle for national liberation. Now, what happens in the 1940s with the Congress 
Utrecht, where the ANC getting transformed itself. It starts involving itself in campaigns mobilizing poor people. Then the argument that had always been put that this was a bourgeois organization such shifting. How are we to deal with the ANC that is connecting with the working class? That is when the thesis of colonialism of a special type comes in. It is a marriage of two perspectives in a sense. We are trying to deal with an argument that is being posed by the ANC, which is pushing for national liberation and an imperative for a class struggle. But Congress, the leadership of the Communist Party, which is based now mostly in Transvaal, come up with in 1962 in the main, because that's how it comes up. It's what is called colonialism of a special type. Now, the fundamental question then that we face moving forward, because I suppose that argument still stands all the question. What should be the relationship between the struggle for socialism and the struggle for national liberation? And I think that question is more relevant now, Minister, perhaps, than it has ever been. Because let's recall what the argument was for those who didn't want an alliance between the Communist Party and the ANC. They always argued that liberation movements, nationalist movements, are movements of the bourgeoisie. They always sell out once they get into power. If you get closer to these people who go the same road, I mean, so we'll be facilitating the selling out of the struggle for socialism. Now, so the question is, then we've been in power for how long? For more than 20 years, for more than 20 years. That question perhaps needs to be addressed more than ever before. What should be the relationship between the struggle for socialism and the struggle for national liberation? Now, there's one, as I close, one historical point, and perhaps we are lucky that we are here at the university to get to look at this. Now, when the ANC takes a decision to go for the armed struggle, Kotane held a different view. It's quite significant. Kotane held a different view. He thought the ANC was making a mistake. Madiba writes about this in his uh, autobiography, Long Walk to Freedom. In fact, when he went to the National Working Committee to make a proposal that the ANC had to turn to armed struggle, he lost. But they were lost. He went to Sisulu as you said and said, why did you, why did you not support me? <laughs> because the person who argued strongly against Madeba was Moses Kodan. The advice that came from Sisulu was that, go oh, have a private meeting with Moses Kodan and perhaps your issue will be sorted out. And indeed, Madeba did go and have a private meeting. He called another meeting of the National Working Committee and placed his proposal again. And the reason why it passed is because Kotane kept quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Kotane kept quiet. Had he spoken, Madiba was quite convinced that that proposal to turn to the arms struggle would have failed. Now, Kotane was a very disciplined member not only of the SACP, but of the ANC, because even though he disagreed with the turn to the armed struggle, but he was at the forefront once that decision was taken. And just one last thing, there is a decade minister that we have not mentioned, the 1970s and the 1980s, especially the 1970s, because all the time what we say is that this alliance between especially the SACP and the ANC was embodied in the name of Kotan. But there has been an argument perhaps that we need to think about seriously. That there was a point in the 1970s where you couldn't distinguish between the SACP and the ANC. 
And I think it's a period perhaps that we need to study quite carefully. Why the SACP, even though leading caters of the of the SACP were leading, especially in the Revolutionary Council. But sometimes it couldn't be distinguished what was where did the line of the SACP start and end and where did the ANC line start and ended. And it is quite significant because there is always an argument that the perspective on the liberation strategy always came from the SACP, which is true. But where the line could not be drawn between the SACP and the ANC, what were the implications of that for that period and perhaps for the future? Because we do need to think about these things so that as we move forward, we know where the line between the SACP and the ANC, where is the boundary between those two organizations? And that has always been the debate since its founding in 1921. And I think it's a useful debate that we need to have moving forward. Minister, I've taken copious notes about the questions that you propose should be taken up by academics and, and students. And I can promise you the University of Johannesburg is going to take up those questions. Starting with working on a book on the centenary of the Communist Party, because I think um, that, and, and, and you know, so we can give you a commitment as you, Jay, you know the book on the centenary of the ANC has not been published until today. The centenary of the ANC was uh, in, in, in 2012, it's, it's 2018 now. It has not been published. This one on the centenary of the SACP, we can give the commitment, come 2021, it will be there. And it will record the enormous contribution that the South African Communist Party has made to the liberation of this country. Thank you very much.